You are watching the performance of a rising star in country music, and if you don't know his music or his face, remember his name, because you'll be hearing it again. We welcome today Mississippi native Derek Norsworthy. He's the holder of the title of Mississippi's 2018 Songwriter of the Year. Derek, man, it's good to meet you. Great to meet you, Marshall. It's a, a pleasure to be here today and, yeah. and, and to be in Mississippi and, and, and speaking with you. So yeah. glad to be here. Yeah, we, we've got a lot of good stuff to talk about. I, I, we have a mutual friend that put me on to you a couple of years ago. It was... Um, it, it was raised by the radio. That was that song. That yeah. he, he sent me an MP3 of, and he said, "This guy, you're going to have to watch this guy. He's really going to be great." So, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, the, the songwriter of the year. That that was a pretty neat process, wasn't it? That was. Uh, it was a life changing thing for me, yeah. and uh, and I you know I always give a lot of credit to uh, Johnny Boswell and Boswell Media yeah. out of uh, out of Kosciuszko, Mississippi. And uh, they, it truly changed my life. Um, you know, I'd been, you know, playing music and doing a lot of things in music. Um, and it changed my life in ways beyond music. I got yeah. to go to Muscle Shoals, Alabama for the oh, first yeah. time. Oh, yeah, it's like going, yeah, the Mecca and, of and, music. And, and when they drip you down in that culture there and, and, and do those things, I got to take my dad with me, and, and he was an old musician, and we went to, you know, Muscle Shoals Sound, and we went to Fame Studios, but we got, like, the... You know, like these these tours from the people who'd worked there and been there oh, forever, wow. and uh, you know, so it just goes back to show you how you know there's people in Mississippi that are being fruitful that are cultivating the state. So I give a lot of thanks to the Boswell family for that, and uh, you know, just uh, it was a, a blessing to me to to you know to to work, to have the title. Yeah, the Boswell family are they're great folks. How did that process work? Um, essentially, you submit your songs, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to them, and then they go through a process of where they actually, um, it's not just them who does the, the process of elimination or choosing, uh, but they actually submit it to a panel of, like, hit songwriters and, um, and people who have, you know, had great success in music, and um, Billy Lawson being one of them who's wrote, like, in, he's just had this amazing songwriting career. And um, but they they send it to them and they get feedback on it and then ultimately they come back and you know kind of you know look through that but they meet with them and it's actually a very refined and professional process that they've got going there. Um, so to get that title and then once I found out what the judging and who the judges yeah. were, I was you know I was, it made you even a little bit more proud. Yeah, I was, I was very you know very very blessed to have that. Where are you from? Escotaba, Mississippi. That's uh, the metropolis that's right north of Pascagoula, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a large metropolis. Yeah, uh, we got a, a few high rises in there, um, <laughs> like AKA water tower. Water tower. Exactly. You're, you're still in all my jokes already. <laughs> no, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, there was another little band that came from there too. Three Doors Down. Yeah, yeah. Three Doors Down yeah. came from there, and uh, you know, I. I'll, we'll talk about it later, but that wasn't my first inspiration for music. But it sure yeah. was a nice. Doesn't hurt. It, it doesn't hurt um, when you're, you know, that kid in, in, in sixth grade, and the band from, you know, Columbus Bluff, uh, you know, gets the record deal and's on the radio. So, um, you know, I always give a lot of thanks to, you know, Brad and all those guys for just. Uh, you know anybody who who uh, prevails or or you know experiences success in you know any form of art, um, you know hats off to them and and those guys you know they did it. You got to figure there's probably a six or a seven or an eight year old that's watching you. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think back to that because you don't always know. You know you can say I want to be a fireman or I want to be yeah. a doctor or a law. You don't always know that, but you do know what makes your heart sing yeah. and, and what lights you up. 
I was about six years old, and my parents took me to this Marty Stewart and Travis Tritt tour at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Coliseum. And that night um, lit a fire in me. Uh, I, I got chills. Marty Stewart opened his show with this song called Me, Hank, and Jumpin' Jack Flash. Mm -hmm. he, he followed up with a song called High on a Mountaintop, and I remember this to this day. And because it was that impactful on my life, I didn't even know Marty Stewart was from Mississippi that night. Yeah. I had no, I found that out like in you know my early 20s. Like, wow, that was, you know, what, that was really great. Um, but that night, I don't know what it was, but that song, that moment, just kind of sparked something to me I didn't even know existed. Had no idea that songwriting and music and you know just rhythm and melody, but I knew that something in me, you know, I couldn't identify it as a six-year-old, something in me uh, that even you know, though there was it was ignited that night, mm -hmm. and uh, so you know. Thanks to, uh, now that I actually know that they're from Mississippi, thanks to Mississippi for producing a Marty Stewart who inspired a Derek Norsworthy, um, you know, to go out and, and chase the, uh, chase the, the dream of, of becoming a, a professional musician, songwriter, and, um, you know, creator. You've gotten <laughs> to open up and play with a bunch of different people. Have you ever gotten to meet either one of them? Marty. Uh, yeah, you got to say, yeah, just to, to be I've able to I've never say met Marty. I've heard so many great things about Marty, and yeah. I know that Marty is doing a lot of great things for the state. Yeah. And, and he is a very well-respected man in Nashville and throughout the world. And, and a real right, connoisseur of country music, too. Rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. He really cares about the heritage of country yeah. music. I've never met Marty. Uh, I would love to meet Marty. When did you really start playing? I've seen 15, 17, but you were a teenager when you really started putting together a band. I, I guess I was maybe 13. You know, my yeah. friend had a drum set, and we were going to start a band. And, and so that's that was kind of my first thing. So we started playing around about 13. I guess about 15 to 17, it started kind of getting serious. We are like, hey, if we're going to do this, we maybe should try to get decent at it, you know. And uh, so from there, it just, you know, kind of progressed. You picked up the guitar and then said, but there wasn't a singer for the band. No, well, uh, I didn't pick up the guitar at that point. I oh, was you didn't? still, yeah, I was still hiding behind the drum kit. Okay. And, uh, you know, and kind of the way that happened was all my friends who were brave enough to start this band. Nobody was brave enough to sing, and and I honestly I wasn't either. I was very content hiding behind the drum kit. You know that was a very good safe mm -hmm. place, and you're protected by, you know, four or five drums and cymbals, and you know you had sticks. If somebody came at you, I mean you're <laughs> yeah. well equipped. Uh, so, but nobody would ever step up and sing. And I had a, we had another friend who could play drums, and uh, so he started playing drums and. I stepped out in front of the mic with no armor. I didn't play yeah. guitar at that point and um, scared to death. And um, But there was something in me, you know, and, and I guess that, you know, just the way uh, the universe works, I was, you know, being started my molding process there to kind of get out and, uh, and, and start breaking out of my shell. But <laughs> it was not overnight. It was not pretty. It was not, you know, beautiful melody or anything like that. It was just really, a, you know, a kid breaking out of his shell, uh, you know, trying to, you know, weed my way through becoming a creator and, and singer. Well, one of the reasons I want to get you on the show, besides the fact I really like your music, I really love your story. And I think it's inspiring because I think so many people, they see overnight success and don't understand that being an overnight success usually takes a couple decades of really grinding and doing your work. I mean, you were in high school, you were playing sports, you could have continued to play sports in college, but you just kept grinding because music was was something you wanted to do. Yeah, I, you know, I had an opportunity, you know, at the end of high school to go play, you know, football or baseball in, a, in you know, junior college or community college. And, um, you know, just, it was like a decision point. I knew I needed to get, you know, an education and I wanted, yeah, there were, there's something and I know you can relate but yeah. as a creator once you once it's in you it, it, it doesn't go away and so I went to nursing school see um, this is this is the really amazing part yeah. yeah so my parents they were like look we support you and they always have yeah. I have an amazing family and uh, they really do they, they've been a, a backbone for me throughout mm -hmm. all this and they never pushed me to be a musician but they've always supported me yeah. and in whatever you know 
the endeavor may be. And they did ask that I got an ed, you know, they said, you, you know, we want you to get an educator. And I, you know, I'm not, I was a smart kid. I needed to go to school. I didn't yeah. need to just, you know, go, you know, not do something with that. So I went to nursing school and, um, Nursing school is very demanding, time demanding. They crunch yeah. a lot of things. They, they want to teach you about this entire body in about, you know, two and a half to maybe four years, something like that. You know, you do some clinicals, but they want to get the nuts and bolts down quick. And, you know, you know, being an 18, 19 year old kid, um, you know, study for the math test, you know, uh, you know, that, mm. but when you really have to start, you know, conceptually thinking about the body and the functions, it, takes time it takes what they call studying that right. you'll you know I had to learn to do and because uh, you know at that point grades had just kind of came easy to me but I would go and um, my instructors I kind of always, always kind of kept it quiet that I was a musician because immediately when people think that, oh you're a musician they think you party you know you do you drink you're crazy and that's not me like right. you know it, this is a music business, and like I told you this morning when I showed up, yeah. these days, if you want to be successful in music, um, you show up with your guitar on your right and your laptop on your left because you better be able to do both. So, any, but anyways, back to the back to the topic here. Um, so, what I would do is uh, I knew that you know, and if you want anything in life bad enough, uh, you'll put in the work and the time to 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 make it happen, and and that's what I did. Um, so I went to school and uh, set a schedule and a structure for studying. Mm -hmm. I also set a you know you know playing dates and touring. And so what I would do a lot of times is like overnight. I remember you know I could see it vividly uh, still, but I would go and play. And if it took me you know if I got through playing and I drove back and I would arrive back on campus at. 3 a.m. A lot of times I would just sleep in my truck in the parking lot with the trailer, the van trailer still behind me, and because I didn't want to go back and be that lazy kid that overslept, because I didn't have to be, because yeah. I knew better than that. And uh, I would sleep in the truck and uh, get a few hours of sleep, and you know go in and, and make sure that I was prepared to take on the day. But yeah, I mean, I, so I got an education and I never stopped with the music. And, and people used to my instructors, they would always be like. You're not you, you you can't like you can't do both and when somebody tells me that I can't <laughs> do something watch yeah. me and that's kind of always been my thing and um, and you know even people around you they start to kind of they don't they don't know you they don't know what kind of fire lives in you you know when it comes to something like a passion for you know or, or a desire to, to, to be a great musician or for me, I feel like I have a responsibility and a duty to create great art right. in the form of music. So, um, you know, if you really want to and it lives in you and it burns in you, you'll find a way. You got to explain something to me, though, because I tweeted out last night that I was going to get to meet you and we're going to interview you today. And um, it may have been one of the Boswells. I'm not sure. But somebody talked about f your five years in community college. and I didn't quite get that. Yeah, well. I don't know that it was actually five years. See now, if you're a creator, you got to twist a little bit of the truth. Exactly, a little, little but, uh, okay. yeah, so, exaggeration. So a little exaggeration. So I wrote a song called Community College, and okay. it kind of talks about my little journey. Um, and it's you know it 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 isn't exactly all of it, but it's kind of it kind of talks about going to you know community college and. Uh, it's kind of a, a funny song about that and the process of, of how that started. Could you and play a minute or two of it? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. uh, I'll, um, I'll play a little bit of it. But, okay. uh, I mean, community colleges are so impactful. And, I, and then I went on to work with East Mississippi. That's right, you did the... Which was kind of funny, you know, after that because it was like, that was, you know, totally my trajectory. But, um, yeah, so this is called Community College and I played it you know, it's just one of those songs I never wrote or intended to be yeah. anything, uh, but it's kind of got a funny little thing that, about, you know, my story. So, and this is just very from the cuff here. Um, goes a little something like this. I had a choice to make. 
for graduation day. Take a full ride to JC. Or walk on up at state. And then the swipe of a pen. And the blink of an eye. Found myself a new home of Highway 49. Well, I went to community college. It was just the right fit for me. The price was right, and I had a good time working on my two-year degree. Well, I dang sure learned how to party. And we had a good football team. Well, I don't regret a thing I did those five years that I spent at community college. So it goes a little something like Excellent. that. Yeah. But this is the cool part. It was, uh, and this is true right here. Yeah. And if for anybody that is, you know, knocking community college, I put the bridge in there. It goes, uh, all five years, my spring break. Lined up with the four-year schools. The sorority girls love to hear me sing. And I love them too. But I went to community college. So that's kind of oh, the, yeah. the kick. Excellent. Yeah, so if you don't need a PhD right off, then uh, I would invite you to go to one of the fine community colleges right here in Mississippi. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. We, as, as we get, unfortunately, I wish we had a little bit more time, but I, I do want you to tell the world who Hannah is because I think she's a very special young lady. Uh, she is a, uh, she's a child with, uh, with Down syndrome, special yeah. needs. And uh, they're all, my thing with, with Hannah, and I'm going to write a song about it at some point, is there is nothing down about that girl. She wakes up every day with more drive and more will than most people who are blessed with a life without any type of, you know, altering, you know, uh, physical or mental, you know, capacity. And Hannah is, she reminds me of when I was lit up by Marty Stewart. Hannah saw me at a songwriters festival. Her mother is a fan of music, but at that point, Hannah didn't really show a lot of interest. She was just kind of, you know, she's a child with special needs, just a child full of life. But yeah. um, her passion then became kind of directed towards music. And it goes to show you the power of music. And when I talk about that duty, that responsibility, a lot of times I wake up in the morning and I think about Hannah. I'm like, Hannah's going to wake up this morning. She's going to tweet. She's going to post songs. She's going to get up and, and do it because she's not lazy. She loves it. It burns in her. But Hannah is, uh, she does have uh, Down syndrome, and um, but she doesn't let that affect her. And she's truly inspiring to my life. Um, I've had an opportunity now to work with uh, she and her mother, Donna, with mm -hmm. their group, uh, South Mississippi Special Needs. They raise a lot of awareness for uh, children with Down syndrome in the area because although they have a, you know, some type of, you know, you know, whatever the case may be, a condition, they still, passion still burns in everybody. And Hannah is a prime example of that. And I think it's important for people like Hannah to carry that flag mm -hmm. in that world and thankfully her mother uh, doesn't try to hide it. She embraces it and, and pushes her along. And um, but yeah, Hannah, you know, she you know lives and breathes for music, and she has been a huge advocate for me. And I'll, I'll tell you, this is a funny story. This is how persistent Hannah is. Hannah got the attention of Buzz Brainerd and and um, Stormy Warren at Sirius XM. Like, yeah. and that was a serious X in the highway, which is the largest yeah. you know, country music station out there. And, um, you know, and, and it's, those things are controlled by, you know, uh, metrics and metrics and labels and, yeah. and yeah. you know, yeah. dinners and those right. types of things, but there's still great people working there with hearts. Right. And, uh, but Hannah caught their attention because they contacted her mother, 
Hannah had contacted Sirius XM the highway 900 times. Oh, wow. Via Twitter. Wow. Over the course of what time, I don't know. Yeah. But that shows the persistence. It could have been years, but she wanted to, she wanted to hear that music on there because that was her station. And uh, she's still, I mean, to this to this moment, my new single, she's promoting it out there. And But that goes to show the persistence and that passion lives in everybody. And I'm a huge advocate um, for, for special needs children and yeah. because I'm inspired by Hannah. People yeah. like, oh, you inspire Hannah. No, like you start looking into that child's life and you'll get inspired. You, um, your dad, he played the, your dad played the drums. You grew up around, you know, what kind of music did you grow up around? And... Oh, I grew up uh, Southern stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, I grew up on, of course, you know, Marty Stewart and Travis Tritt, but yeah. a lot of Leonard Skinner, a lot of, a lot, a lot of uh, Almond Brothers, yeah. uh, you know, actually my first song never sing, and if I think if we had cell phones now, my mom would have it, but um, was a Motley Crue song, and she said I used to sit in the car seat in the back of a, she had this old Fifth Avenue, and I, for some reason, I, I don't recall being in a car seat, because I think, I remember spending a lot of time in the back window <laughs> of that right. car, yeah. that, like my spot, and yeah. I, it's probably not legal, but um, she said I would sit back there and go, girls, 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 so somebody was playing Motley Crue around me at some point, yeah. too, so. So there was, you know, a, a lot of that, a lot of country music and uh, just a lot of things you hear in the South. And, you know, I fell in love with, uh, you know, country music and rock and uh, because of the songs. Yeah. As we wrap up, I just wanted to say thank you for giving back to Mississippi, too. You, you really do seem to be a really good ambassador for the state. And I know that means a lot to you what the state's given you. Yeah. And as, as we talked, you know, off the set, you know, a lot of what drives me, it's not, you know, it's not the career of Derek Norsworthy. It's that... I was born and raised in the birthplace of America's music. Yeah. And again, I have a responsibility um, to give back and to keep cultivating that as a creator. And so, you know, I've done, you know, I do whatever I can to, to go into schools and do music education. I work with the Mississippi Songwriters Alliance and Mississippi Songwriters Festival, uh, you know, heavily in their educational program uh, to make sure that we're reaching out to those kids who maybe don't know where they're supposed to go, you know, or in life, but music is an outlet and there's tons of people out there. It's a, it's an entire, you know, it's a billion dollar industry and there's all kinds of jobs in the music industry. So, and you know, I even went as far as I started a, a small, you know, kind of little philanthropic group and clothing line called, you know, rep your roots. And, uh, we try to give back via scholarship to, you know, different little, you know, organizations. And it's very small scale, but it, you know, just want to make that imprint. And because it, it, it's what we, it's what we're supposed to do. Right. Because if we're not giving back, there's no reason in getting, you know, like, it, you know, life doesn't work that way, you know, like, so, you know, I think it's important to be fruitful and uh, kind of one of my, uh, you know, my theme is grow where you grew and create great art. And uh, so that's what we do. So we spend a lot of time, you know, anytime I can be, you know, part of an education system where I can go down and sit with a, a music class and play guitar and just let, let kids ask questions because they're curious and they don't know. And, and I found, you know, there's so many people out there from Mississippi who are, we know a lot of them. I mean, you can go to the museums and see a lot of them, but there, um, there's so many out there, especially in Nashville, who are, who have great careers. And I hear the phrase often that, yeah, Mississippi, it's a, it's a good place to be from. And again, when I hear that, it, it, for me, it's like, you know, it is a good place to be from. And it's a good place to keep growing because what Mississippi brings out and the art and the artists that it creates, those children are still being born. Those, those youths are still being born every day. And just imagine, you know, they, they may be singing your song on the radio and have no idea you're from Mississippi. So it's, uh, you know, it's paramount to make sure that creators are coming back to the state and continue to inspire the youth and, and cultivate 
um, you know, the rich music and, you know, art culture we have in Mississippi. Derek, thank you for taking the time today. It's been a real pleasure to get to meet you. This is great. I've, I've really enjoyed it, and uh, I thank you guys for having me on today. Oh, yeah. It's our pleasure. She wears Bobby and tank tops, talks about Woodstock, and loves Bobby McGee. She's a beast body rocking Bonnaroo, baby. Hands up in the air, Alabama shaking. Loaded gun, no worries, man. Hit the peace pipe, play me one more song. Whoa, she got it. Swing to the beat with that beast body rocking. Shaking, loaded gun, no worries, man. Hit the peace pipe, play me one more song. Whoa, she got it. Swing to the beat with the peace fighter.